All right, thank you all for joining in. Um, I would like to um, walk you guys through on how to install Business Objects. Um, in this case, we're installing SAP Business Objects 4.1. Uh, before we get started, um, quickly, I'd like to talk about uh, sort of the architecture of of this product. Uh, business Objects Server or Business Objects uh, 4.1, and even the older versions, uh, they they require a, a what's called a repository or metadata repository. Um, um, which is usually installed on a database server. So you need to have a database where you can save essentially all the configuration information of uh, business objects. So again, business objects requires a repository and the repository essentially have um, configuration information, um, things like security, uh, what content you have on your business object server, etc. So you have to have that to uh, to proceed or to to actually uh, run this product. The second thing is the audit repository um, that's optional. Uh, audit repository uh, contains different event information related to your server, things like you know your user login, what reports are being run, etc. So that that uh, component is optional. It is not required. However, you do need to have metadata repository, which is required. Luckily, uh, the install uh, automatically installs everything. The install program installs everything um, that you need. So it does install the metadata repository. By default, it also installs the audit repository. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with the actual install. So here I'm uh, logged into um, uh, the business objects server or, or the server where I'm going to install business objects. Um, I've already downloaded and extracted the the server component. There's also a client, uh, which uh, uh, I'll probably do next. However, to to get the server thing installed, you have to have these four files, um, or in this case, there are four files. I have already um, ran the first one, and it has created this one folder for me. So it's, uh, this folder here is actually um, the one that contains um, all the installed files. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run the setup. It may take a little bit since I'm running it on a on a virtual machine. Um, so I'll probably pause before I um, go to the next next step here. Okay. So here's uh, the the first dialog. Um, you have to select obviously your desired language. In this case, it's English. Um, I'll go ahead and click OK. It'll ask you. It'll go through basically um, uh, a sort of a check uh, to make sure everything is is okay. Uh, you have to meet all the requirements, so it looks like everything has succeeded, all the, at least the critical ones. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit next. All right. Accept agreement. And here, here's what I'm gonna. Here's what I have to do is uh, put in my product key. So let me pause that. All right, so um, I just entered uh, the the product key and I hit next. Um, English is already selected. I don't need any other languages, so I'll select next. I'll do a full install. Uh, here's a default um, a destination folder. Uh, you know, pretty much everything you can select everything as default, and it should be should be fine. And here it's asking me to um, to either install a new database or use an existing one. This is this is the one we just talked about. This is where our metadata repository will be installed and we'll also install the um, uh, the audit database uh, on the same server. So since I don't have a have an existing database, I'll use the one provided by SAP in this case is uh, Sybase SQL anywhere. In the past, they used to have different uh, versions. Uh, there was a version with my, my, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Express, etc. Et so lately, they've been using um, Sybase SQL anywhere. So we'll just use that. Um, since Business Objects runs, um, uh, or part of it also runs on a web server uh, where users can log in um, to, through a web browser, it's asking. Um, um, you know, Java web application server, uh, which one needs to be installed. So I'll just use the default one in this case. Um, and here, um, 
basically it's asking about different version control uh, we'll use the default uh, method here configure and install subversion um, since I don't have any uh, have any other options um, after the installation uh, our server intelligent agent which is used to start and stop services and some other uh, you know you can also do some other things um, uh, it's gonna be installed um, it's gonna be using port 6410 I'll leave everything as is since none of this would, uh, uh, you know, have any confl uh, con uh, conflicts w with other applications. So, uh, for the most part, you just want to use the basic, um, basic default settings. In here, um, I'll use a CMS port to be or leave it uh, as 6400. All right. So this is a default account or or the administrator account. Uh, so uh, information. So you can set up your password. Uh, on this screen, um, so I'll go ahead and use that right now. Um, the bottom one is actually for clustering, um, so you, you have to set it up here. So I'll set up a cluster key as well. So if I ever do clustering, I can, you know, I'll use this cluster key later on. All right, so I must have. Uh, All right, so I think I use uh, the wrong or type of password. So I was trying something new and then didn't, didn't like it, I guess. All right, so this is uh, the repository account. Um, in this case, uh, the repository account or the I'm sorry, the not the repository, but the but the DBA or administrator account on the SQL. Uh, Cybis SQL Anywhere server. So uh, we have to set that up here as well. Again, I'll use the same, uh, you know, so all the default settings for for everything else. Uh, let's see. All right, so here is asking um, to enter password for the LCM user uh, for version control. So I'll do that. Right, so that looks fine. Let's do. Again, I'm not going to configure that. Um, the SMD agent. We'll go to the next one. Um, I'm not going to configure that either. And let's go ahead and do the installation. All right, so I kept switching back and forth. I apologize. It was taking a little bit longer. Um, so the, the installation actually just started. Um, it's going to take probably several hours. Um, and it's just essentially going to go through, the, you know, uh, for next maybe two three hours or so um, after everything's done um, you'll actually see uh, this screen and I just took a screenshot um, from my previous installation and uh, once you're done with that click on finish and basically that would be it and then uh, you'll be done with, with the actual installation um, now coming back to it I think that's pretty much it um, uh, like I said um, uh, you know, right now all you have to worry about is you know um, running through the the metadata repository, the repository setup, also the audit repository. Um, uh, so I think both of them um, are done right now. One thing I'd like to um, mention is uh, the the install process for um, previous versions of uh, business objects. They're they're pretty same, very similar to this uh, the, the, these steps. In addition, if you're also running um, Crystal Reports uh, server, um, I think the the solution is is pretty much identical. So uh, we'll go ahead and finish this up, um, and I'll um, after the solution is done, I'll start the second tutorial, um, and I'll walk uh, walk you guys through some of the the basic components um, that are installed after you know after the solution has been finished. All right, thank you.